just one month after the epic visual feast that the Starship Super Rocket treated fans, we saw the next Starship carrying serial number Ship 28 roar through a static firing test. IFT-3 has been coming closer than ever. This rapid progress seems to be unprecedented in history. So how did SpaceX get so fast? What SpaceX just did with Starship Turnaround completely shocked NASA and the whole industry. Discuss everything about this in today's episode of TechMap. But before we begin, our team extends a warm welcome. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and enable notifications to stay up to date with the latest news from SpaceX and the world of space. With that in mind, let's jump straight into today's episode. The SpaceX community has been buzzing with excitement in recent days as Ship 28 just experienced a stunning static fire test. By contrast, Booster 10 is not so lucky. In its static fire test on December 21, some issues occurred before liquid oxygen loading could be completed. At the time I did this report, there had not been any backup date for the B-10's test released. Do not worry. At least SpaceX is familiar with problems in Starship's testing, so I'm pretty sure they will fix it quickly and everything later will be smooth. After the tests on both S-28 and B-10 are complete, the Starship upper stage is likely to be stacked on top of the booster to complete the launch vehicle. At this point, it seems likely that the hardware for Integrated Flight Test 3 would be substantially ready to launch. As Kathy Luders, SpaceX's general manager for the Starbase launch site near Brownsville, said the company will target the first quarter of next year for this third test flight. It would be great if we were in the first quarter, definitely. With current positive signals, that timeline is completely achievable. Yeah, this shows that the Starship's progress is snowballing. You should or shouldn't forget that it took SpaceX more than a year to get the license for their giant rocket to take off for the first time. For Flight 2, this number drops to seven months, more than half the time of Flight 1. Looking ahead to Flight 3, the company plans to shorten the gap even further to two or three months. With this momentum, in the not-too-distant future, it may only take one or two days. Who knows? So what did SpaceX do to shorten the process? First of all, if you look at the list of tests that Ship 24, Ship 25, and 28 had to undergo, you will notice a clear decrease in the number of tests over time. Specifically, in 2022, Ship 24 went through 19 tests. For Ship 25 and Ship 28, this number went down to 9 and 4 respectively. And it's worth noting that as Starship test flights become more successful and major design changes become less frequent or urgent, SpaceX will be able to perform all future proof testing as soon as possible. As a result, we have more evidence to believe Ship 29 will roll out its static fire campaign before the end of 2023 or in early January 2024. Secondly, we can't help talking about the iteration philosophy that the company has been chasing for a long time. Therefore, necessary equipment such as the rocket body or parts of the zero stage and the rocket are always in a ready state. Rapid design iteration is not just a technical concept, but more importantly, it is a mindset that permeates SpaceX throughout its culture. It involves a continuous feedback loop where data from each launch is analyzed and improvements are implemented quickly. This approach stands in stark contrast to traditional aerospace development cycles, which are expensive, slow, and risk-averse. SpaceX's willingness to embrace failure as a stepping stone to success has allowed the company to accelerate its progress and achieve groundbreaking milestones. The poster child of the old guard is Boeing's SLS rocket, which will only launch once a year and cost taxpayers $1 billion and still does not match the performance of the Super Heavy and Starship platforms. Last but not least, it's about the launch pad. It's not an exaggeration to say that the water deluge system saved SpaceX. As Elon said, the accident on OLM at IFT-1 was due to the mega steel pancake not being prepared in time while SpaceX was too confident in the effectiveness of Fondag concrete. It was this subjectivity that cost the company too much when its rocket was held up for seven months. Until the November event, many prayed for the safety of Stage Zero against the terrifying power of the Starship Beast, powered by 33 Raptor engines. 
Fortunately, the water deluge system worked well so the post-launch refurbishment of the OLM is minimally required. Not only will this help cut down on unnecessary work and save time, but it will also help the FAA approve upcoming launch licenses more quickly. Absolutely quick and professionally done turnaround, folks. SpaceX has set the standard here and should shock absolutely everyone, including NASA and the entire rocket industry. Let's look at our neighbor NASA with their most controversial rocket, the SLS. Started being developed in 2011 with the initial goal to serve politics rather than space exploration. The SLS, famous for reusing hardware and labor from the shuttle program, but is also well known for delay. NASA promises to launch the mega rocket as early as 2017, only to postpone it again and again. After consuming billions of tax dollars and five years of waiting, this vehicle finally lifts off the ground. The uncrewed maiden flight of the SLS, the first operational flight of the Orion capsule, happened on 16 November 2022 under NASA's Artemis 1. Under Artemis's official schedule, its upcoming launches will take place in November 2024 and December 2025 respectively, especially in 2025 or Artemis 3. It will accompany Starship HLS in the historic mission bringing humans back to the moon. After over 50 years, it means that SLSA's turnaround will take an average of about one or two years per launch, not mentioned to the unexpected risks leading to the postponement. This makes sense because unlike Starship, the shuttle-derived vehicle cannot be reusable. Each launch would make a hole in Congress's budget of up to $4.1 billion, an amount of money enough to shock anyone. I know that as I write this. Some will comment that SLS is ultimately just a system dominated by politicians. So it wouldn't be fair to pit a Congress launch system against a launch vehicle developed by a private company that doesn't have many constraints. Okay, to some degree, I strongly agree with you. So now let's talk about another private firm, Blue Origin. Best salesman Jeff Bezos seems unsuited for manufacturing rockets because his company, over the past 20 years, has yet to achieve any significant achievements. The new Glenn is still the X Factor, whereas the suborbital new Shepard rocket is slightly better. It has marked 24 launches within eight years, but to get to the 24 that we have to wait more than 15 months. Well, more than 15 months just to prepare for the suborbital mission? Sounds weird. During those eight years, a more complicated and heavier orbital rocket, Falcon 9 has landed more than 250 times and counting. In February 2023, it broke the record for a record for the shortest time between missions, five days from the same SpaceX launch pad. With that slow progress, I don't think the fact that BO makes its rockets reusable would help reduce costs in this case. One more typical example is NASA's Space Shuttle. This first reusable rocket in the world served NASA from 1981 to 2011, promising to be a game changer in the United States aerospace by then. Yes, it did. During that time, Five complete space shuttle orbiting vehicles were built and flown on a total of 135 missions, with turnaround times between missions ranging from 10 days to several months. Is it impressive, right? Being inspired by NASA's partially reusable spacecraft system, Elon Musk pushes this legacy further by making a new fully reusable rocket, namely Starship with the largest capacity and largest size ever built as well as much more modern than Space Shuttle. Not that enough, SpaceX wants to make the Starship surprisingly cheaply and quickly. With such complexity, can Starship surpass its predecessor and achieve its goal of aircraft fast turnaround times? I think it's possible. Starship is designed to be caught mid-air by Mechazilla, which is expected to help the Starship turn around in less than one hour. This is pretty risky because no one ever tried before, but what if success? Yeah, so cool. Perhaps the limiting factor on how fast it can be launched will be the speed at which you can load cargo into its hold. The space shuttle took several months of refurbishment before it could be relaunched, and even then, only the lander was practically reusable. Refurbishing the solid fuel boosters costs more than building new ones. The huge external tank was not reusable. The shuttle's engines needed replacement after just seven flights and inspection and repairs to the heat shield took an eternity. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode.
Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification feature so you don't miss any space important updates. Your support is our driving force to continue delivering high quality content. Thank you and we look forward to seeing you next time.